The adrenal gland is located inside the retroperitoneal cavity and sits on top of each kidney. The adrenal gland is two glands in one. The adrenal cortex is the outer region or crust. The adrenal medulla is the middle region. Think of the adrenal gland like a jelly donut with the inner jelly part, the medulla. Like the donut part of a jelly donut, the cortex goes all the way around. Upon taking a slice out of the adrenal gland, we can see the two main regions. The adrenal cortex surrounds the adrenal medulla in the center. Notice how the adrenal cortex is both above and below the medulla, like a jelly donut. The adrenal cortex has three distinct layers called zona. From the outermost layer, there is the zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. The zona glomerulosa releases a family of hormones called mineral corticoids. The main hormone you should know from this family is aldosterone. Aldosterone acts on the kidney tubules to retain sodium and water, which increases blood pressure. Aldosterone also increases potassium excretion via the urine. Mineral corticoid release is stimulated by high extracellular potassium levels and a powerful blood pressure hormone called aldosterone 2. Zona fasciculata releases a family of hormones called glucocorticoids. The most common is hydrocortisone, better known as cortisol. All cells in the body have receptors for these hormones. The main effect is to increase fat use, conserve glucose by increasing formation but reducing use, so blood glucose levels remain elevated. In addition, cortisol can increase abdominal fat accumulation, which has recently been shown to dramatically increase cardiovascular disease risk in a combination of factors called metabolic syndrome. There are known anti-inflammatory effects, which is why a form of this hormone is used clinically as an anti-inflammatory. Adrenal corticotropic hormone from the anterior pituitary gland is the main stimulus to release glucocorticoids, which is primarily the effect of stress as perceived by the brain and detected by the hypothalamus. The zona reticularis secretes sex hormones, primarily androgens like testosterone. However, estrogen can also be made from this region. Testosterone increases male-like secondary sex characteristics like increased muscle mass and facial hair growth. This region is affected by overall sex hormone levels. The adrenal medulla secretes hormones of the sympathetic nervous system, epinephrine and norepinephrine. They target alpha and beta receptors which have a multitude of functions all over the body. Their collective effects follow the flight or fight rule, such as increased heart rate, pupil dilation, etc. Anything that will activate your autonomic nervous system, sympathetic response, like being scared, will increase the release of these hormones. The release of these adrenal medulla hormones allows our heightened physiological response to danger to be sustained over a longer period of time. The examples when you get frightened, you instantly feel the tightening of your stomach, and then you realize the danger was something like the wind and are no longer scared, but your heart is still beating strongly for many minutes thereafter. The immediate effect of increased heart rate and stomach tightening is a neurological activation. But the sustained heart rate effects are a hormone which is manifest from both norepinephrine and epinephrine, and it takes a while for them to clear your system. The pancreas is located deep inside the abdominal cavity. It is hidden under and behind the stomach. When the stomach is removed, you can see the long pancreas with a tapered tail and head tucked next to the first part of the small intestine. This location allows it to easily secrete digestive enzymes into this part of the intestine. The pancreas has a head which is located near the arch of the duodenum or first part of the small intestine. The pancreas tapers down to the tail which is located by the spleen. When a slice of the pancreas is removed and stained, it looks fairly uniform with variations of pink. 
Acini are the clusters of exocrine glands that are stained dark pink. The light pink or pale regions are called islets of Langerhans. Some are large and some are small. These islets are the endocrine portion of the pancreas producing hormones. The islet of Langerhans have alpha and beta cells that produce glucose and insulin respectively. The pancreatic acini secrete digestive enzymes that go through the pancreatic duct into the small intestine or duodenum. These exocrine cells make up the majority of pancreatic tissue. The islet of Langerhans are the endocrine region of the pancreas. The hormones insulin and glucagon are made from the islet of Langerhans and they travel throughout the entire body via the blood. These hormones affect blood glucose levels. All cells have a glucose shuttle system. Insulin is the trigger for this shuttle system, allowing glucose to enter cells through specific channels and be used for energy or storage. Between meals, when blood glucose levels drop, glucagon is released by the pancreas. Glucagon allows glucose that has been stored within the cells to be released into the blood thus increasing blood glucose levels. To summarize insulin action, when we eat a carbohydrate, it becomes absorbed in our body as glucose. This glucose is represented as blood sugar levels. As it rises above normal levels, that's when the islet of Langerhans will detect this, telling these beta cells to release insulin. Once insulin is released, it attaches to the receptors on cell membranes and it helps to transfer that glucose into the cells. The insulin also helps liver cells take up any extra glucose that wasn't used by the other cells of our bodies for immediate energy. The liver cells will store it as glycogen to be used later between meals. As our blood sugar levels drop back to normal levels, the beta cells will stop releasing insulin. When we're hungry between meals, that's when glucagon kicks in. The blood sugar levels drop below normal, so any deviation from normal triggers a hormone response. In this case, if it's below normal levels, the islet of Langerhans alpha cells will release glucagon. Glucagon stimulates the liver to break down that glycogen storage form. That way we can now increase our blood sugar levels back to normal and the alpha cells will stop releasing glucagon once we have achieved normal levels again. In type 1 diabetes, it is an autoimmune disease, meaning our body attacks itself. And what it does is it attacks the beta cells which release insulin. Therefore, our ability to release insulin is impaired. This is problematic because when we eat carbohydrates and we end up with glucose and we have high glucose levels, we need the insulin in order to shuttle it into the cells. When we don't have the beta cells to do that, we don't have enough insulin and we end up with chronically high blood glucose levels. That's why the patients must inject insulin after every meal because the beta cells are not doing it. Diabetes mellitus type 2, however, is developed over many, many years. It is where we have chronically too much insulin. If we eat too many simple carbs, sugars and things like that, we desensitize our insulin receptors on our cells. And that way, when we have a normal amount of carbs that we eat, our body responds by making insulin. But because the receptors are so desensitized, it will not allow that glucose to enter the cells, and therefore our pancreas must increase insulin production even more. And over years and years and years, our pancreas gets overworked because it has to release so much insulin just for a little bit of carbohydrate just to get it into the cells for us, our bodies to use as energy. The treatment for it, unfortunately, is to inj also inject insulin. Because our cells are so desensitized to insulin, we need so much to just to get the glucose to enter those cells. The best way to treat this is really exercise. 
cont there's many drugs out there that help resensitize these receptors and they are a good short fix but the only way for long-term meaningful and resensitization of these receptors is actually requiring yourselves to use the energy and to need it and exercise is the best way to do that.